Come on in. Mr. Corey's waiting for you in the living room. Thank you. Mr. Corey, Jamie's here. Jamie? Can I get you anything from the kitchen? No, thank you. Then if you'll excuse me, I'll see you about Amanda Snap. You wanted to see me, Mac? I wanted to see you for some time. What about? I want you to tell me why you've left Cecile. Darling, that was very nice. And the fruit cup was delicious. Well, it's easy to make. That's the important thing. And the main dish is even easier. If only the oven hadn't failed me again. Oh, honey, I've been meaning to have that fixed. Well, now that's one of the things I was going to tell you. You can have the oven fixed. Oh, thank you. Because you're going to be living here. Oh. Rick and I are moving out very soon. Well, darling, that's wonderful. Where'd you find a place? Well, it's Olivia's place. She's subletting it to us. Ah, oh, pretty fancy. But the rent is rather fancy, too, isn't it? No, you'd be surprised. She's giving us a real break in the rent. I think mainly she just wants to take us, take, wants us to take it off her hands. Well, that's very fortunate. I'm so happy for you. And for me, too. It's going to be nice to be back in my old place again. I'll bet. Well, my darling, it's been very nice, just the two of us having lunch together. It sure is nice having a meal with a friendly face for a change. Ah, I don't like the sound of that. What's wrong, Marianne? I don't know, Mom. Lately, Rick and I just seem to be at each other's throats. Does it have anything to do with Cecile and Jamie's separation? Another world. I've left Cecilia. That's it. I really don't want to talk about it. Well, I'd like to talk about it, Jamie. I'd like us both to sit down and talk about a lot of things. Do we have anything left to say? I think we do. I'm not so sure. Please, sit down. I've spoken with Cecilia. She's very confused, very upset. She doesn't understand why you've taken this particular time to leave her, especially in light of all the trouble you two have had before. I must say, I'm confused by it as well, Jamie. Mac, do you think I'm sufficiently capable of making a decision on my own? Yes. Do you think I'm capable of deciding what is best for me? Providing you take the time to think about what you're doing, yes. Mac, I don't need any more time. Marrying Cecile was a mistake from the start. I know that now. I should have realized it sooner, but I didn't. Okay, that was my mistake. I see it now, and I want out. But why did you decide last night? There must have been something in particular that happened to make you decide. Cecile says she doesn't know what it was. Doesn't she? Well, yes, there was something. And Cecile knows very well what it is. But I don't want to get into it with you, Mac. I can't. Well, I'm just hoping that your mother's intense antagonism towards Cecile hasn't forced you to do this. Mac, you're not listening to me. Mom didn't force me to do anything. I made this decision on my own. I don't believe this. You don't believe what? On the one hand, you say I'm capable of making a decision on my own, yet when I do make that decision on my own, you automatically assume that that decision is, has been made for me. <clears throat> Mac, I left Cecile. I have good reasons for doing so. And I've asked Brian to file for divorce, and that's it. You don't think that you owe her the opportunity to discuss it? She says she's tried to reach you several times. You won't speak to her. Oh, I see. She's been over here crying already. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Was Sandy here, too? What does Sandy have to do with it? Nothing. Forget it. Jamie, you have to realize I feel at least partially responsible for No, Mac, you are not responsible. I am responsible. I am very responsible. I think that just about covers it. I think that everyone's decision to conceal from you the fact that Sandy was my son... Mac, I don't resent the fact that Sandy is your son. In fact, I, I, I am very happy for you. I know how much a son. I know what that means to you. 
And now you finally have what you all, you've always wanted. Yes, I have what I've always wanted. And I've always wanted you to be my son, Mac, too. Well, Don't you... But What shakes me is the fact that there has been a lot of lack of trust by you, by Sandy, by Mom. Look, Mac, we've been over all this before. I, 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 I just think we should forget it. Mac, Sandy is your son. Now, that's great. You're divorcing Mom, I'm divorcing Cecile, and that just about covers it. You don't mean that. Yes, I do, Mac. Now, I, I've got to get back to the complex. I have a lot of work to do before the end of the week. Look, Jamie, it's true your mother and I are divorcing, but you have to remember that you've been my son for many years. I love you, Jamie. I don't want that relationship to change. Do you believe me? Yes, I... I believe you. I've got to go. I can't imagine someone having their own helicopter. Can you... I'm beginning to. You know, after a while, you start thinking like these Blackhawk people do. And right now, the idea of a penthouse and a heliport sounds perfectly normal to me. Really? Yeah. You know, I forgot to tell you, Blaine might be working for us. A Blackhawk? Yeah, she might be decorating the penthouse for Mr. Black. Well, that's terrific. That's just what she needs in her life right now. And they seem real pleased that she might be available. Oh, do they know her? I don't know, but when I brought her name up, they, I got the distinct impression that they did. Hmm, that's kind of strange. Nah, not for Blackhawk. They, they seem to know everything about everybody. I'm real happy about Blaine. And she's going to do a good job. She's talented. Yeah, I'm sure she is. So where is Kid Brother hiding out these days? Oh, well, it beats me. I haven't seen much of him. In fact, the last time I saw him was at the barbecue. Why? I'm oh, just curious. I think you might be getting some uh, good news pretty soon. <laughs> might be getting some good news? What do you mean? I just think you might be hearing something that will make him real happy. Or what? They just formed a new semi-pro hockey team in Wisconsin, and they're going to ask Lee to join the team. How do you know that? Because I arranged it. You arranged it? How'd you do that? Well, when I heard the team was forming, I called the coach, who just happens to be a good friend of mine, and I reminded him of what a talented hockey player my little brother is. I don't know if you should have done that. Why not? He should be playing hockey. Well, sure, he should be playing hockey, but shouldn't that be his own decision? Do you see him making any moves to toward his hockey career? Because I don't. You know, what I see is a kid who's willing to throw away ten years of his life, and for what? To be, to be an errand boy at a newspaper. He's happy. Oh, come on, Clarice, how can he be? He's not making any money. He's living in that, that, that hole of an apartment. But so what? He and Sally are happy. That's just an act. Neither of them want to live that way. Is he going to have to move to Wisconsin? Well, he can't very well uh, play for Wisconsin and live here, now can he? Well, I don't want him to go just when I get my brothers back again. Why should Lee have to leave? Because it's a great opportunity for him. I don't think you should have done it. Why not? Because you're interfering in his life again. I mean, don't you see that? He wants to do it his own way. But that's just the point. He's not doing it his own way. If we wait for, for Lee to make a movie, he's, he's going to be too old to play hockey or anything else for that matter don't have any confidence in him, do you? Well, you tell me honestly, Clarice. Do I have any reason to? Yes. And I'm telling you, he's going to be hurt by what you're doing. I don't care if he's angry or hurt by it. It's still better than having him not amount to anything, isn't it? Mom, you're beginning to sound just like Rick. I'm sorry, darling, but you didn't answer the question. Does Cecile and Jamie's separation have anything to do with you and Rick fighting? Look, Mom... I'm really sorry that uh, Jamie's marriage didn't work out, but Rick and I were fighting long before that. I see. But to be perfectly honest, I am really worried about Jamie. Mm-hmm. But then I'm no more worried about Jamie than Rick seems to be about Blaine. Hey, wait a minute. How, how did Blaine get into the conversation? Oh, well, Blaine has been having a lot of nightmares lately, so Rick's been running over there to comfort her. 
Well, darling, he is a doctor. Right. And I'm a nurse. And almost every time that, that Rick has seen me with Jamie, it's been in that capacity. I really don't see that there's any difference. Well, I don't think you're being totally honest with yourself. Remember, you did care a lot about Jamie. And as I recall, Rick has never been interested in Blaine in that way. I, I don't think it's the same thing at all. Okay, whatever you say. But uh, no matter what I do, Rick is always going to be jealous of Jamie. For no reason. Oh, Mom, there you go, sounding like Rick again. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Marianne, I do trust you. Look, I mean, anyway, it, it's not the reason we're fighting now. Oh, what's the reason you're fighting now? Russ has scheduled me to attend a two-week seminar in advanced ECU techniques. Well, that sounds wonderful. But it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Rick doesn't want you to go. Oh, he's ecstatic. <laughs> Don't I wish. Well, did he say so? No, he didn't say so. He didn't have to, I can tell. I'm sorry, honey. Are you going to go? I want to. And maybe it would be best if we were apart for a while, you know? Give us some time to cool off, think about where we are. But really, I mean, the most important thing to me is that I just feel like I have a lot to gain from this. I, it'll help me advance in my career. I hope you do go, honey. Look, why don't you tell Rick just what you told me? Hmm? What, that we need some time apart? Well, it's an honest reason. I mean, and he'll know that it'll be good for your career. I think he can understand that. Well, he could, but I don't know if he would. We just seem to be missing the mark in that department lately. Daddy was over a little while ago. Yeah, what's up with him? Uh, a little too much, I'm afraid. What's the matter? He arranged for Lee to join up with the semi-pro hockey team in Wisconsin. Oh, that's good, isn't it? I think it's wrong. Why? Well, they should have asked him first. It's his life, isn't it? Well, yeah. Did you tell Danny that? Well, I sure did. What did he say? He didn't care. He wants Lee to get ahead, and he thinks the only way he can do that is if Denny pushes him. Well, he's not going to be too happy about that. I know. That means I got a problem. Why? Well, if I tell Lee, it's going to hurt him. But on the other hand, he has a right to know the truth about why he was hired. You got a point. Am I too old? Too old for what? Too old to have a baby. <laughs> You're only too old to have a baby when you can't have a baby anymore. Look how old I was when I had Nancy. But, Ada, they warned women in the 30 about all kinds of bad things happening to oh, them. Oh, that's a lot of junk. Anyway, if you're healthy and your doctor says it's okay, you really want to have another baby? <laughs> yeah, I really do. You know, I'm older than Larry is, and, and he's got a lot of time, but me... Well, then do it. <laughs> have you talked to Larry about it? No, I, I want to talk to you first because... Because I've already had the experience. Yeah. I think Larry would really love to have a baby of his own because Corey isn't really his own child. Well, no, but Corey is just like his own child. Oh, I know. But it's not quite the same as fathering your own child. No, I guess not. Tell me, Ada, are you glad you had Nancy when you did? <laughs> I'd be glad I had Nancy whenever I had her. But it was... Uh... A lot different from when I raised Rachel. Different how? Different good? Different bad? Different good. In what way? Oh, money, for one thing. And, uh, you know, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel when I raised Rachel, and I didn't know where I was going, and now I don't have all that much money, and I'm still not sure about a lot of things. But I'm a lot more... Relaxed than I was about things. Yeah. Well, you know, as far as money goes, we got rid of that huge mortgage and, and moved here, so we're okay that way. And there was something else I was thinking of, too. What's that? Well, I have all these happy memories with, you know, my little brothers when I was growing up. And I want Corey to have that, too, a brother or sister to grow up with. 
You think it's a crazy idea, Ada? Me no, having a I baby? don't think it's a crazy idea. But I think you have to talk to Larry about it. I mean, it's something that the two of you have to want to do. Yeah, you're right. Well, then talk to him. Well, I will. When? Tonight. I told you I wanted to give you two weeks to think about everything. I could have thought if you'd called. Did you think about me? Are you kidding? That's all I did. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi. Welcome hey. back. How you doing? Hi. Listen, um, I hate to give this to you on your, you know, first night back, but can you drive tonight? Wayne's out sick. There's nothing I can do. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Are you? No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. yes, I can. Thanks. Yes. Oh, oh, did you hear my news? No, what news? You didn't mention it to me? No, I did not yet. We were talking about something else. Well, what? What's what? I'm a resident in psychiatry now. You're going to be a shrink? <laughs> not a shrink. Psychiatrist. Well, shrink, it's easier to spell. Really? Well, that's what you want that. to yes, do? It's true. That's what you want to do, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do. Oh, good, good. I'm happy for you. All right, well, shake my hand because I got to go. I'll shake, right. I'll shake your hand. Watch my finger. All right, where were we? I was just telling you that I thought about you constantly. Yeah? Serious thinking? Very serious. And did you come to any decision? Yes, I did. I was afraid to ask <laughs> you. Joey, <laughs> please ask me. Right here? Yes. Before somebody else comes up. <laughs> Kit, mm-hmm. will you marry me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd love to marry you. <laughs> Cecile Frame. Jimmy Frame. <laughs> what do you want? I hear you've been trying to reach me. Yes. Well, I don't have time to talk to you, but I would like to pick up the rest of my clothes at the penthouse. Would that be convenient for you? Sometime well, tonight. what time are you thinking about? About nine. Nine. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'll be there or not, so, um, so you better bring your keys just in case. Oh, and Jamie, leave them. I don't want to have to have the locks changed again. I should have called you first, Larry. Sorry. You didn't have to call me first, honey. You're always welcome here. You know that. I am so upset. What's the matter? Well, Lee's been offered a job with a hockey team in Wisconsin. He really wants to go. I can't go to Wisconsin. I can't leave my family and my job. To be honest with you, I don't even know what to do. Denny was here earlier. Denny, I don't understand. Well, you will. See, Denny knew about the offer before Lee did. Wait a minute. Lee talked to Denny? No, 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 no. What I'm trying to tell you is that Denny arranged the offer for Lee. Well, why would he do a thing? Oh, wait a minute. I see now. <laughs> he doesn't want us to get married, so he offers uh, the job to Lee, and uh, that's what this whole thing is supposed no, to be no, about? No, no, no. I don't think so. He didn't even mention you. Well, Clarice, why would he do this then? Because he wants Lee to be a success at hockey. Danny thinks if he doesn't take some steps that Lee's just going to forget all about it. Oh, but that's not true. He's over at that rink every day with the Bay City Blues practicing. He doesn't have to go to Wisconsin. I know. I think it's wrong, too. He should have some faith in Lee. Lee can make his own decisions. Yeah, well, I can't believe he'd do a thing like that. Beginning to think Lee's made right about the whole thing. About what? But Denny. He's always telling me how Denny's butting into everything. I think I'm beginning to believe him. Well, I'm just afraid that he's going to be very hurt. No, he's not going to be hurt. He's going to be angry. What are we going to do about this?
Well, I know what I have to do. What? I'm going to have to talk to Denny. He started this whole thing. He's just going to have to fix it. But I don't know if he will. He's very determined. Yeah, well, I'm just going to have to try, Clarice. Because I'm determined, too. Oh, yes. I, I remember reading that. And then it's all set. Yes, I think it seems to me like it's clear. Oh, excuse me, Mac. I didn't know you had business. I I'll be back later. Please, Alice, don't go. Well, if you're sure. Positive. Come sit down. Robert, this is Mrs. Frame. Alice, Mr. Bond. He's my attorney, both for the divorce and the child custody hearing. Hello, Mr. Bond. My pleasure, Mrs. Frame. Now, as I was saying, uh, the divorce hearing is set for tomorrow, 10 a.m. Now, I know you had plans on being there in person, but with your recent injury, I doubt if anyone would fault you for not being there. No, I've said that I would face this directly from the beginning, and I will. Providing, of course, my nurse will allow it. Oh, I think it would be all right, as long as it isn't too strenuous. Fine. Well, I have to get back to the office. There's a lot to clear up between now and the hearing. I'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. sharp, right? Absolutely. Thank you again. It's a big help to know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You say you definitely don't expect any snags. No, at least not in the divorce. Good. But as soon as the divorce is granted, the court will have to set a custody hearing date, and that, Mr. Corey, I can tell you, will be a tough one. I see. Thank you again. <laughs> I've reviewed the Frederick Howard file. Yes. And right. I think these all go with the reader's reports. Uh, well, now, don't forget, you have an appointment with Diane Vance at uh, 5 p.m. this afternoon, personnel. That late? Oh, yes, I couldn't arrange it any earlier. I mean, you've been so busy. No, she that's okay. I know how hectic things have been. Well, uh, I could call her and try to change it maybe till no, tomorrow. That's... Or... Tomorrow? Oh, I can't do it tomorrow. I have to go to my mother's uh, divorce hearing. Oh. And that's not for public consumption, Liz. I understand. Well, listen, we better get these letters off then so you can sign them and to make sure I have them. Jamie? Have you got a minute? Uh, excuse me, I guess I'd better uh, <clears throat> do this at my desk. I've got a list. You still here? Yeah, and I'm staying until we talk. Well, you might be standing there for a long time. Oh, I don't think so, Jamie. I think you want to talk to me just as much as I want to talk to you. And that's what we're going to do right now. I don't believe you. You and I have said everything there is to say to each other. And maybe more. So I don't think it's worth it to rehash the whole thing again. Yeah, well, I do, Jamie, because there are some things I have to tell you. Well, I don't want to hear them. Well, you're going to. Okay, what? First, I'm not working here anymore. What? I talked to Mac, and I told him that I think it's impossible for us to work in the same building together, much less the same office. So I've taken a job with Philip Lyons at the Ledger. Fine. Is that it? No, that's not it, Jamie. I took that job because I think you feel I'm some kind of a threat to you. A threat? Come on. Oh, that's right. You're sloughing off, but you do. You think I'm trying to take your job, take over your position? You're not a threat to what I want. Well, that's right, Jamie. That's what I've been trying to tell you. No, no, no. You're not listening to me. You have no idea what I want, so how could you possibly be a threat? What are you saying, Jamie? I've said what I had to say. You've said what you had to say, so how about leaving? Jamie. And don't do this. Don't do what? Well, now, you're the one who's not listening to me. I'm not going to let you do this. Jamie, you're my brother, and you're my friend, and I don't see why in the you're world we can... You're not my can... brother, and you're not my friend. Not anymore. Why? Because I didn't tell you who I was, first thing? Now, come on, Jamie, even you have to admit that uh, you've been in pretty bad shape these recent months. Come on, you got to concede... Come on, that has point. nothing to do with any of this, and you know it, Sandy, so let's... Well, just... then what, Jamie? Cecile. No, no comment? Well, I, I, I didn't know that you knew. So you've been keeping it from me? Well, of course, I didn't want you to know, especially now. Especially now that you've been sleeping together? What? You heard me. Jamie, you've got to be kidding. You are sleeping with Cecile, aren't you? 
No way. You can't believe that I would honestly well, be sleeping with you. Well, I don't believe you. You're a liar, Sandy. And as far as I'm concerned, we have nothing to talk about. Jamie. Oh, I forgot it was there. No problem. After all, that's what I'm here for. Certainly not to pick up after me. Want to talk about it? No, no, I don't want to bore you anymore with my problems. Max, somehow they don't seem like just your problems. You're still thinking about the divorce, aren't you? I hate to admit it. Yes, I am. I think it's only natural. It's a very painful process. But I don't understand it. I mean, I've accepted the separation. I know the divorce is necessary and unavoidable. It still hurts, Max. It's not something a man of your sensitivity can just brush off. But why is that? It's only a formality. Rachel ended our marriage effectively quite a long time ago. I think that's where people make a mistake, thinking that divorce is just a, a legal action. It's a lot more than that. And I'm beginning to believe you're right. Divorce, to me, in many ways, is like having to deal with the death. Yes, that's true, isn't it? It is the death of a relationship. No, thank you. You know, when Stephen died, I felt as if I were the only one who had ever experienced the loss of a husband. I had very little sympathy for those women I knew who were divorcing or divorced. I thought they just hadn't worked at their marriages, that they had just thrown their relationships away. Then you went through a divorce yourself. Oh, yes. Then I found out. During my divorce from Ray Gordon, I found myself experiencing the very same feelings of, oh, I don't know, grief, loss, self-pity. And yet I'm told that's all normal, natural. Just like death, we get over it and, and we get on with our lives. Thank you, Alice. Thanks. What for? For explaining things that way. For making me feel much better. Do you really? Yes, I do. But I still can't understand how you always manage to do that. How? Oh, maybe it's because I want you to feel better. I think you do. And I think I know you well enough and care enough for you to understand how you feel and why. It's just that simple. No. It's not simple. Not simple at all. Thank you. Be a better nurse for it. That's what you want. Well, I thought you knew that. I mean, I thought you knew how I felt about my career. Oh, I do. Guess I just don't know how you feel about us. Well, I don't know. Um, I think maybe if uh, I go away for a while, it might be good for both of us. How do you figure that? Well, if I'm not here, then we won't be fighting, will we? So what you're saying is that we need a, a cooling off period? Could be. Anyway, I'm going. I just wish you had talked to me about this first. I think you had absolutely no consideration for my feelings in all of this. Oh, look who's talking. You have no right to demand of me what you don't do yourself. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Rick. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, how did I find out about your psychiatric residency? I had to hear it from Olivia. I explained that to you. I said I was going to talk to you about that later. Right. 
Yeah, and I was going to tell you about this seminar later, too. I really hate this. You hate it? Yeah, I come home every day tired from work, and I have to go through this. You think I like it? I'm tired, too, you know. I work, too, yeah, remember? I know that. I know that. All we do all day long is fight. So what else is there to do? We don't seem to have anything to talk about. Why don't we talk about Jamie Frame? You seem to love to talk about that. You're the one who's always harping on Jamie. That is because I come home at 2 in the morning oh, and fight him in my living stop room. Stop it! You know that's not true. If you really want to know how I feel, I'm getting just a little bit sick of, of, of you running over to comfort Blaine. Blaine Ewing is my patient. Oh, come off it, Rick. That lady is nobody's patient. She's got a lot else Mary in her Ann. mind. Oh. <laughs> Hi. How you doing, kid? It's Joey. Up. You guys uh, really look radiant. <laughs> What's yeah. up? Hi. Hi, what's up? Well, no, we just came by to bother you for a little Did while. How you doing? Will we come up in a bit? Maybe no, 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 no. One time's as good as another. That's come on in. That's what I say. That's what I always say, too. How you doing? Fine. Oh, you guys all right? Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Can I get you some tea or something? Uh, no, no, I have to go off to the hospital in a little bit. Just, you know. So tell me, what's the occasion here? Well, well we just uh, came by to give you some uh, good news. Good news? Well, something we certainly could use right now. Well, come on, spill the beans. What is it? Um, I just asked Kate to get married, that's all. You're kidding. <laughs> what did my sister say? Your sister said yes. Oh. Oh, oh I'm so that. happy for both of you, really. Oh, that's great. I wish you all you the too. happiness you in the world. <laughs> um, hey, listen, I really have to run. I'm sorry, I gotta get to work. You want a late shift? Yeah. I'm on a late shift. You want a lift? Um, is that all right, Rick? Fine, Mary. See you later, brother in law. <laughs> All right. Hey. Mm, take care. Okay. I love you. I love you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <sighs> now, what was all that about? Ada, thanks so much for coming over. I hope you didn't mind my calling you. Well, no, I don't mind. You sounded so upset. Of course I'm upset, Ada. The divorce hearing is tomorrow. <sighs> well, Louise, you knew that. Why are you so surprised? I guess I just didn't believe they'd really go through with it. Yeah, well, I tried to tell you. It's what they both want. I suppose I, I just didn't want to believe it. But, Ada, earlier I overheard Mr. Corey and Mrs. Frame talking. What were they saying? Mr. Corey said this divorce is going to be very difficult for him. Divorce is never easy. Then why are they going through with it? That's what I don't understand. Just because the divorce isn't easy doesn't mean that the marriage can still work. They still love each other, Ada. I'm certain of it. Well, that may be true, but it doesn't mean they can stay married. Does Mr. Corey really think he can love Mrs. Frame as much as he loved Mrs. Corey? Who knows? Or does Mrs. Corey really believe she'll love that Mitch Blake person as much as she loved Mr. Corey? Look, Rachel loves Mitch Blake, and he loves her. That much I do know. Maybe for now, but it won't last. Ada, I feel so helpless. If there were only something I could do to stop this whole thing, they're all making a terrible mistake. Well, look, don't try, Louise. It's what Rachel and Mac really want. Wonder. Please, look, it's their decision. And we just have to accept that. Mm. God, that was wonderful. That was all my favorites right there. There's more to come. Oh, no, wait a minute. Honey. Listen, I can't eat anymore. I'm about ready to just burst. Just a little taste, just a little taste. Done. Strawberry shortcake. That is my favorite. No, that's why I made it. Well, wait a minute. Wait, this seems like a very special meal to me. Well, it is. You're right. Uh, what's the occasion? Well, um, I want to talk to you about something. What's the matter, baby? What's no, no, no. Wrong? Nothing's the matter. It's just the opposite. That's why I want to talk to you about it. 
You know, you're not making a whole lot of sense right now. Oh, I know, I know. It's, uh, it's just that I'm real happy now. And I, I, I love this apartment, and I, I love my job at the beauty shop, and I love our marriage. Well, I'm happy, too. And but... it's just, there's just one thing that I think would make it better. Yeah, what? Well, you know, I mean, I'm not getting any younger. I want to have another baby. Yeah? Yeah, honey, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I think it would be good for Corey. Well, well what would you do? Like, give up work at the, at the beauty parlor? Well, just a little while. What do you think? Well, I, I think it'd be wonderful. I, I really do. You're not just saying that. No, no, I'm not. I mean, you know, I remember how much fun Blaine and I used to have as kids. I, I think Corey ought to have the same thing. Well, oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, I we didn't have such easy times when we were kids, but, you know, still we had a lot of good memories. Yeah, I think it's a terrific idea. I'm so glad, honey. I, I was afraid that you'd think I was being silly. Silly? Where'd you get that idea? Oh, I don't know. You know, I thought maybe I was too old or something. Too old? You? And that, that is silly. That's real silly. I love you so much. I love you, too. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Rick. You and Marianne were ready to kill each other. It was just an argument, all right? <laughs> Rick, you're my brother. And as long as you're my brother... I'm going to worry about you. You should know that by now. I do know that. So, I've never seen you and Marianne like that. I don't know. It's like we just, just can't find the right things to say to each other. Jamie? Jamie. Is he still... Are you still worried about him? I'm not going to be... T I mean, if I'm totally honest with you, yes, I'm... It doesn't thrill me that he's broken up with Cecile. So he bothers you? He bothers me. Bothers me. Rick, mm -hmm. there's something bothering Marianne, too. What? Blame. She's worried that you're spending so much time with her. This is ridiculous. Blaine is my patient. She needs someone to talk to. I don't buy it. Blaine Ewing is dangerous. All right, kid. Now, she may have caused some problems between you and Jerry, but she is not j dangerous. She's a very lonely, frightened woman. You believe that? I do. I've had long conversations with her. I know what it I'm talking about. It is those long conversations that have Marianne so worried. So worried that she's leaving town. She's going out of town for a seminar on ECU techniques. Mm. If she was really concerned about our marriage, she wouldn't be going. Not now. Residence. Hello, Miss. This is Cecile. May I please speak to Sandy? Of course, Mrs. Frame. One moment, please. Hello? Hi, Sandy. It's Cecile. Listen, I'm really sorry to bother you, but um, I, I was just feeling really depressed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and um, I'm all alone here, and I... I thought, would it be too much to ask you to come over and spend a little time with me this evening? Well, Cecile, um, why don't you come over here? Oh, well, if you're busy, then, then we'll just forget. No, 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 baby. It's, it's, it's nothing like that. It's just that Mac and Alice have, uh, have planned kind of a, a late supper sort of thing, and I thought maybe you'd like to join us. No, uh, no, I, I don't think so, Sandy. That, that's okay. I, I don't think I'd be very good company tonight. Probably do you some good to get with some people. 
Yeah, you're probably right, but I, I just don't think I'm up to it. Thanks, anyway. But you go ahead and have a really nice time with Mac and Alice. Um, I'll, I'll just be fine here alone. Uh, yeah, well, um, look, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll come over, okay? Okay. Um, what, what time can I expect you? Well, it'd probably take me about an hour, uh, say by nine. Fine. Thank you. That'd be just fine. of you to come over here like this, especially when I'm such bad company. Oh, Cecilia, you're never bad company. Hey, why don't you come over to the house and have dinner with Mac and Alice and me? No, Sandy, I, uh, I couldn't possibly do that. But you, you go on ahead if that's what you want. Uh, I just don't think I'd be very good dealing with people right now. What's the matter, Cecilia? <sighs> Sandy... My husband's left me. I don't know why. He won't return my calls. And I, I just feel so worthless. There's no reason for you to feel that way. I can't help it. I just do. Cecile, just because you and Jamie have split, that doesn't make you any less a person. Do you really think that? Yes, I do. I don't think that's a good idea. Cecile, I've got to go tell him. I mean, he, he's going to think that we were just... Look. Excuse me. Jamie, I want to... Listen, if I've forgotten anything, uh, just throw it out. story of another world.